Good evening, everybody. It's me, Captain Logan, and joining me tonight, filling in for DJ Martinez as the chat moderator. It's Connor Nielsen. Connor, thanks for joining me again, man. Appreciate you, buddy. Of course. Thanks for inviting me. Tonight, we got Connor playing chat, and we also have with us uh, special guests, uh, three special guests. We haven't had a big group like this in a long time. It's Lame Genie, uh, one of my absolute favorite video game cover bands. Welcome, oh. guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. And I promise with six of us here, we'll make this as chaotic as humanly possible. Yes. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right into this. I wanted to introduce you guys to Lame Genie in case you're not familiar with them. Uh, if you are, you're going to get to hear them talk about their uh, about their love for video game music and what they do as a band. Uh, and we're going to play some music as we go along. Uh, before I play anything, I just wanted to uh, ask you guys if you would uh, talk for a second, plug yourselves, uh, particularly about the recently... I'm, I'm glad it took us long for us to get together as it did actually because we almost did this a few weeks ago and if we'd done that we wouldn't have known about the vinyls that you guys just uh, uh, put on pre-order so tell us about the vinyls all right so first off we are lame genie um this true. is kyle true on the drums <laughs> jeff on guitar mike on bass um recently we did two full-length vinyls um one is metal covers of all of the songs on Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. And the other is all the songs off of Turtles in Time. And as he mentioned, um, both of these kind of came to fruition in the past couple of weeks. Almost but, accidentally. <laughs> almost yeah, accidentally, yeah. but they've been a long time coming. Right. Um, I think we recorded Turtles in Time in like two years ago? Maybe a year ago at this point? Yeah, it was two years ago. Yeah, right? and you know, it's the, the vinyl release process was different and you know we didn't we we ha we're going with somebody and then it didn't work out and then we kind of backed out and then we kind of just shelved it for a while that's why both of these vinyls are like coming out almost at the same time now and by um, different companies by it looks like it's two different companies yep that's One so on, weird uh, <laughs> that the release dates matched up that way <laughs> it's it's completely by accident i apologize to anyone that wants to buy both but yeah <laughs> i wish we could package them right i know oh my god right <laughs> See, yeah, what I was waiting just, uh, for was, like, my hope was, like, an exclusive announcement on my show for the third one. Because these came out in such rapid succession, I was like, oh, they're, clearly they're going to put out just everything they have, like, week to well, week. We're going to we get these announcements. Well, we have a huge surprise! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't have anything. Oh. One side's Kirby, the other side's Pokemon. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, no, there's nothing. There's nothing coming. Just the two. Just the two. Dude, imagine. Oh we we just God. release a bunch of finals in like a week. Right. <laughs> Out of nowhere. All, all right. different companies. We're doing a but... audience participation. Tell us which vinyls you want us to release, and they're releasing today. <laughs> right now. Wow, how'd you but... guys design these that fast? It's amazing. <laughs> AI, baby. I think um, a big reason that these came out the way they did is we ran into big licensing issues mm. for both of them. I was going to ask you about that. What's up? I was going to ask you about that, because I would think releasing something just, you know, based on Ninja Turtles that has that title would be difficult. So whenever we do a cover, we have to buy licenses for it. Um, but a digital license is different from a mechanical license, and a mechanical license is so you can release stuff like vinyls. Yeah. But there are all sorts of rules about it, like it has to be... Um, the soundtrack has to be released on its own, not just in the game. And Zombies Ain't My Neighbors just had an, uh, a soundtrack release in the past year. For the yeah. Switch. Yeah, for the, yep. for the Switch. So that freed up those licenses, because that was another one that was recorded long ago. Yeah, that got stuck in licensing for like four years, right? Yeah, Something like yeah. that. And we, we couldn't do anything with it. We couldn't sell it or anything because the licensing wasn't available. Um, that was, so that's it was lucky. literally just sitting there. <laughs> I love how we immediately were like, yeah, we're this exciting video game yeah, cover yeah, band. Yeah. Let's talk about licensing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys hurry up and do something with House of the Dead because that just got re-released recently. Oh. And so those licenses are probably licenses are probably easier to get now than they used to be. I'll cover the typing of the dead versions. <laughs> yeah. I think the yeah, music is all the same from 2, is it not? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> I used to love House of the Dead. The typing of the dead was amazing, dude. That's how I learned how to type fast. Are you kidding? I learned from Mario to teach us typing. 
Me too. And so did Jason. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> Jason, do an impression of Mario Teach's typing. Oh, I can't do Mario Teach's typing. Oh, I thought you had a whole thing with that. No, oh, no, that was, that what, was, what was Mario's that game? game Gallery. Oh, do Mario's Game Gallery. Interplay, along with Presage, proudly present Mario's <laughs> Game Gallery. So accurate. Go nice, nice. That's amazing. Spot on. And then it goes like, Mario, go fish. Ah, uh, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna go to fishing. You guys, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, got, you guys should play uh, the House of the Dead remake that came out on switch what was it last year or the year before year. uh but it's yeah from the ground up and it's great and they're and they're working on two right now which i'm stoked for Ooh, does switch have light guns or like zappers it, no they got the thick little joy cons it doesn't uh, and that's frustrating because they but they also right. don't have hardly any other light guns or are light gun games on that on that console right. and the wii was wonderful for that uh, but anyway, would you guys talk uh, a little bit about how you came together and got started? I know you guys have been around since 2013, but I don't know how you guys meet or uh, or, or how you find each other. Um, so in 2012, I coincidentally recorded a cover of Alley Cat Blues from Turtles in Time. And um, Mike heard it. And he asked me to do another song, so I did it. And he asked if I wanted to make a band out of it. At first, I was kind of reluctant because I was like, I don't know, how far can this gimmick right. possibly go? <laughs> yeah. But um, here we are today. But I met um, Kyle through Mike. Um, and we got together. We were jamming, what, like three weeks later? Yeah. And I think, and, you know, we all kind of played uh, original local music for a long time yeah. in the same scene. So we, me and Mike have been in, or Mike and I rather have been in the same band for 15 years. 15 years. So <laughs> I think every local original band that we were in, we were in together. Um, and then, you know, we, we always played with Jeff's bands and Jeff's bands played with our band. All members interchange. So we kind of have a history in Rhode Island local music scene when there was a really good one going on. And um, I think that's kind of how, you know, we, we all were very aware of each other when we met, you know. Hmm. I just didn't know that these guys were big fat nerds like myself, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> were you guys playing any of your own original stuff, or was it all covers even back then? What kinds of stuff were you playing when you weren't playing video game music? Originals. originals. Yeah. yeah. We wrote uh, originals up until this band. This is the first band that any of us have been a part of that did covers, really. Um, and I think we just kind of took our our style of writing original songs and smash the video games covers into them. And that's, you know, that's exactly where our, our sound came from. Yeah. That's kind of how I do it. Um, whenever we cover a song, it's like, write a song that you would write, but in the theme of okay. this video game right. song, mm -hmm. um, at least following the melodies and all that mm -hmm. stuff. That explains the distinct style because even though, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm listening to you guys, from you guys to is the things that I'm familiar with, uh, you can always tell it's you. Like if somebody played me one of your covers and I, I, I didn't know it was Lame Genie, I could tell it was you guys. With, oh, I should say, awesome. one notable exception, which is, I uh, I was a, a fan of, like I said, the, the Zombies album and uh, some of your Sonic videos and stuff for a while before I realized that you guys were the same channel that did the Mortal Kombat video, because somebody sent me that after I discovered you guys, and I wasn't even paying attention to like, the title of the channel or anything, and a couple months later it hit me, I was like, Oh, yeah, that's Lame Genie. I'm already a fan of these guys. How did I not catch it was them? That's so funny. Yeah, I think that happened a lot with that Mortal Kombat because that cover particularly had such a different audience than people that are looking for video game covers. You know, I think it was posted on Kotaku and a, and a bunch of other, like, news and movie outlets, which is a fan base that we don't know when movie fans come to see us. I mean, when we post a movie cover, it usually performs very poorly because our fans aren't movie fans, you know? Mm. I mean, and I think... Because we got that outside coming in, that's where that difference uh, came in. Um, for those who aren't in the know, we recorded a cover of the Mortal Kombat theme a couple of years ago. And um, fun story is, I was thinking, how do we make this different? And then I just kind of said, like, hey, imagine if we got Gilbert Gottfried on Cameo to just read all of the stuff from the song. So we sent him a message, and we actually told him what it was about. And... I get a text or an email like 20 minutes later from Cameo, and I'm thinking, all right, here's the rejection letter. Mm -hmm. 
I opened it up and I was like, oh my God, he actually <laughs> did it. And then we ended up mixing that into a song, making a video out of it. And the rest is history. It's one of my favorites that we've done. Yeah, it's mine obnoxious. too. And we're going to play some of it right now. Yes. All right. All right. And, and I want to say one of my favorite things about this is just all the mistakes. It's wonderful. Oh, oh yeah. The best. We'll send you the raw copy. Oh, boy. Text your mind. Text your mind. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm muted. I uh, th th this I uh, th this video has turned Jason into a Gilbert Godfrey fan. Uh, <laughs> nice. we, we quote this all the time. We went in and uh, looked at some of his stand up. Uh, we 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 quote the uh, he, he has this whole thing in uh, as, a routine he did in I think the '80s about pancake syrup. That's amazing. Like 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 syrup in Canada, where he's like he's like you you go to Canada, and uh, when you get off the airplane, they don't. Uh, they always offer your ma maple syrup. <laughs> and he's like, maple we syrup. Ca ca Canada. They found this disgusting brown goo, and they said, let's <laughs> eat it, and let's make other people eat it. Yeah, Godfrey's amazing. I uh, it's it, it's it's yeah. Go ahead. He died a day, a one year to the release of that song. And that, and I think we were one of the last like big things that he did, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's shocking and it's awful, but you know, it, it was, it was really crazy that when, cause when he died, I was like, oh my God, Gilbert died. Um, and all these comments started flooding on our video and I looked at the date and it was one, exactly one year ago. It was crazy. And then part of me was thinking, uh, I'm sorry, this is the last thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> But it's got to be kind of an honor, too. Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And he, he tweeted about it multiple times, and uh, he, he seemed like he was he, he just seemed like he was excited about everything people were doing with his stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool that well, and I'm sure some of that is because of like like flack that he got with with uh with like the Affleck firing and all you know some kind of unfair stuff that that happened with him. Oh, yeah. uh, it was it was kind of sad to see that like in his in his latter years it seemed like he had a podcast and that was about all he was doing. Uh, he did some things with some content creators, uh, like James Rolfe with uh, yep. EGN, and uh, that's a really funny video. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad to know that he was such a good sport about it and had such a good time with it. I I, I love that you guys apparently didn't give him any kind of pronunciation notes or anything because clearly he didn't uh, know the name, so he just goes Cano, and well, we cannot uh, stop quoting that. It's really funny. I I think the funny J O H H. <laughs> So Johnny is a very common name, and yeah. it was spelled correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, did you guys send it to him on a cocktail napkin in terrible handwriting? <laughs> no, that um, him reading that influenced the way the song would go. Because when yep. he's stuttering on the J O O O, I was like, let's just do a build up where I'm just right. holding notes, like waiting for that word to end. Yeah, so because <laughs> I remember listening to it back at first, and I was editing it together. Um, I was like, what am I going to do with this? And I was, and we were talking like, oh, we can make this a whole part in itself. Let's save it for the last half of the song. Like kind of like a big reveal of how we actually, you know, the raw copy of how we said everything. It was funny. When you first got that, were you sort of like, okay, this is really fun, but I don't actually know if we can use some of this. <laughs> oh, we were going to use it no matter what it sounded like. Are you kidding? <laughs> Honestly, 
<laughs> that was one of the happiest moments of my life. Yeah, was just really I was just like, I can't believe he actually right. read this. <laughs> I went upstairs. It makes and I it better. My wife right away. I was like, listen yeah. to Gilbert Godfrey did this. She's yeah. like, yeah, go downstairs. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what's really <laughs> funny about that is people who don't know who Gilbert Gottfried is, we've gotten some comments on the video being like, this singer is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes you wish that we could we could have gotten then a Mortal Kombat game where he's the announcer voice. We had a petition, yeah. There was a petition out there for that. Really? Yeah. A yeah. petition that we didn't make. No, yeah. That Gilbert should be the, one of the announcers in Mortal Kombat. And we were like, oh my god, if this happens... That we should just so quit grave. as a band right now and just <laughs> hang it up because that's nothing's going to top that, right? Yeah, I was like, uh, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? DLC isn't that out of the question no, I know. for Mortal Kombat. For sure. Yeah. No. no. You know? Well, I mean, we had a lot of it with Injustice, and it's the same company, the same engine. Yeah. Right? Mm. Just random. A Terminator was in Mortal Kombat, wasn't he? You know, they, they, they go yep. that. They go there all the time, so. Oh, that's yeah. true. They had, yeah, what am I talking about? They had uh, Robocop. Right. Yep. I think that was the last one for for that for the last Mortal Kombat game. Uh, guys, watching live right now, uh, feel free to throw in questions uh, at any point, and we will of course get those out to the Ling Genie guys. Uh, Jason, do you have a question for um, these guys? Sure. Um, I have, I I have a question. <laughs> um, what what are uh, I, this is probably different for each of you, uh, but what is your favorite video game soundtrack of all time? Chrono Trigger. Mega Man 3. Probably say Mega Man 4. Love all the songs on yep. that one. I, I, I base that mainly around which one, as a kid, I remember listening to Mega Man 3 soundtrack all the time, even though I wasn't even playing it. And that was the first game that I can really remember, like... Hearing that soundtrack and being like, "Whoa, this is this is really cool." And I played two, but there's something about three soundtrack that that I just really love. See, my yeah. favorite my my favorite Mega Man soundtrack is two. Yeah, everybody's is. That's why I always say three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I loved three. I actually didn't play much of two when I was a kid. I was all about that three. And three X is actually, great too. I think like probably five different bands that have been in i wanted to open a set with the opening to that game yep. and they all thought it was stupid yep. who's laughing now well, it is stupid, <laughs> it is stupid. <laughs> why do you uh, like four mic uh, uh there's a lot of motifs in between songs right. that just kind of keep on it just gels together in like an album form very very well i think just Mega Man in general you know every yeah. every song every Mega Man game is great Except, like, uh, what was that new one that came off of the Switch, a couple, like, four years ago? Uh, Mega Man 11? <laughs> no, it was the one, the uh, art style was completely different. It was all, like... Uh, oh. Mega Man 9? It was all cartoony. It was, it was, the soundtrack was weak. Well, anyway. 11 oh, yeah, was the one of... that came out for the Switch, but I'm not oh, okay. sure... Yeah, the soundtrack was just all That's... techno. It was, it was crazy. Man, yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. Song are the best Iron Maiden songs that Iron right. Maiden never wrote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I could probably, if I were to update it, I was kind of just under pressure with that. I'm just like, what else is sick that I've played lately? The Messenger. That yeah. has to be one of the best like modern video game soundtracks, if not of all time. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. Whoa. Dude, going out there for that one. I'm not even familiar with that. Oh, The Messenger is oh. awesome. It's yeah, that's a... Uh... It's like a uh, uh, Ninja Gaiden uh, reimagining that came out, what, 2012? No, 2014? 2018. Oh, wow, Jesus. Um, but, it, but it's great. <laughs> it's really, really good modern take on Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. You'd really dig it, liking all the retro stuff. Because right. it does, yeah. like, there's, like, a, an 8-bit mode and a 16-bit yep. mode. Well, they're not really modes, but they're different universes. Right. In the, within the game, it's cool. I've always wanted a game that did that. How have we not heard yeah. about them? We're, like... Yeah. There are different, like, things that are 8-bit, 16-bit, like... Like, I've always yeah, so wanted... Like, I think it... uh, I've always wanted a Mario Kart game where, like, you can switch between, like, the different Mario Kart styles. Well, remember oh, yeah. Wonder Boy? Wonder Boy came out with the game on Switch when Switch first released that mid-game, at any given point, you could switch the graphics back to uh, old Wonder Boy, and it was pretty awesome. And it, and it was seamless. There was no loading or anything. You just hit a button, and all of a sudden, you were in retro Wonder Boy. It was crazy. That's sick. Yeah. 
Guys, we're going to go ahead and play another track now, and then we'll start getting to some audience questions. Uh, we're going to go for the track on the playlist that Connor picked, and I actually haven't heard this one yet. I wanted to wait for the show. Uh, Connor wanted a more recent track, and Connor, by the way, how much of, uh, you haven't gotten to say very much yet, how much of uh, these guys' library did you actually go through yesterday? Um, well, between yesterday and today, I uh, so at work, I basically just got put on a special assignment all by myself and then for um for lunch i was going to walk so i just listened to basically i think half a little over half of what you guys have on spotify right now wow. um tried getting in a nice um blend of uh yeah i listened to some like your tv show themes and then like retro games more contemporary games i'm not much of a gamer um so it's kind of nice to get acquainted with like you know different different sounds mm, cool well, so thank you. Thank so you see, Connor voice. is an overachiever because I, I I come in here calling myself a fan, and now Connor knows you guys way better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely haven't listened to half. I <laughs> uh, Connor, how, much. how much, much of the stuff you heard were you already familiar with? Like it was was it mostly just new melodies because you you are yeah. not really into this or? Well, so I'd say like my favorite video game music is because I'm. I'm really like a uh, um, a casual video gamer uh, is like stuff like Legend of Zelda music. Um, and like the one that I saw on Spotify was uh, Breath of the Wild, which is a game I've not played. And so I'm like, I'm going to listen to this. I'm like, this this stuff's pretty cool. I should play Breath of the Wild pretty soon. Um, but and a game with good music, but like this much music. There's like no music no, in that really. game. Yeah, that, that's why we didn't cover it until like a month ago because we were on a – we did a, a compilation, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and they asked us to do some Breath of the Wild songs, and I, I avoided it because the soundtrack is so sparse. It's very hard to turn songs like that into songs. Like, sometimes people will request something, and I'll listen to it, and it's more of a soundscape. Yeah, it's like, like, what do we do yeah. with this? Yeah. Well, yeah. and I was I was gonna I was gonna ask you, do you think there's a song that just wouldn't work as a metal cover? Oh yeah. There's a yeah. ton of them. Because yep. <laughs> some of the stuff you guys have done, I'm like, I don't know how you make that sound good in metal, and then you guys constantly prove me wrong. Uh, dire, dire docs. I'm like, how do you turn that into a, in, into a metal song? No, no problem. That's one of my favorite ones, yep. actually. Um, yeah, it gets really tricky with, like Jeff said, a lot of the ambient and orchestral... The, the orchestral shrimp stuff that's more on the ambient side, that's where it becomes tough, where there's no... There's no melody, and you know you have nothing to, to catch the listener's ear to let them know what this is. You know, I think that's a big thing is making sure that the song has like a a, a part in it that lets the listener know what it is. Yeah, good call. I think I think a lot of people when they hear a video game song, and like one that they really like, it often has to do with how many times they've played it yep. and had to hear it. Where to them it sounds like a normal song, and They'll request it, and I'll be like, you don't want to hear what this sounds like. <laughs> I still think one of the funniest ones was when we uh, squeezed out that Among Us one. When oh, yeah. Up, when Among Us game. Yeah, it's that's right. just ambience, and I think it just bounces between two notes. <laughs> and some, like, Oh, it's... wait, did you do the main theme? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one of my favorite What? Done. It came out so awesome. So, yeah. so with that one, we did it in a way where I was just like, dude, you know what? We're just going to write just our own song and yeah. then have these two chords over right. it. So we pretty much wrote like this really extremely heavy black metal song, and then you can just hear the Among Us chords coming in every once in yeah. a while. <laughs> so actually, I figured the whole song would just be cover, would, would, would just be a solo. Right. <laughs> um, I actually had a, co a question uh, regarding this, which was you could almost see like video game music as its own medium of music because it's kind of designed to sort of be played on a loop as you know you're you know as accompaniment and you guys really structure the music um to be like you know traditional metal like song structure um so i was just curious like how you guys make those choices like i was listening to that pokemon scarlet and violet track that had like an eddie van halen style tapping solo i don't think that's in the pokemon game uh but it was really cool and i like how it builds and i like how it changes but it still stays true to that recurring theme right thanks um yeah for stuff like that particularly with pokemon we decided at a point where like we're just going to cover every song off of this game that we know of mm -hmm. and so that becomes a challenge in and of itself 
where you don't give yourself to, the choice to say no, and it kind of forces you to be creative, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, I think, you know, one of the most important things that I always look for when structuring stuff is, um, like you said, I think the structure is, like, super important, and whether the creators of the song or the composers intended for it or not, I always try and find a chorus part, right, where, you know, everything, like, all the sections can lead up to this part. Um, whether, you know, it's whatever's the hookiest part, like when, when a composer designs a song like that, they're probably not thinking, you know, wh what's what part's the hook that people are going to remember? What's the chorus of the song? And I think an important thing that we do or we try to do is make sure that we can always get to that one part that's like a release, like a big chorus, like, you know, pop music has and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's always nice when um, at this point I can hear a video game song and be like, okay, this was actually written by a guitar player or whatever. Because oftentimes, it's a challenge to stay faithful to what's actually going on in the yeah. song. Because it's just either, if it's more recent, it's MIDI, not intended to be played on guitar. Mm -hmm. Or way back when, it's just someone improvising. Like, <laughs> what comes yeah. to mind is Maniac Mansion soundtrack, Maniac which Mansion. is one of my favorite soundtracks <laughs> of all time. It's like, top five for me is Maniac Mansion. But you know when you're listening to that, like Dave's theme, the solo in it is just garbage. It's just it's just a <laughs> dude falling asleep on his keyboard, and it's like solo, whatever. And then Jeff, I think that was one of the first cover covers we ever did, and you you transcribed the whole thing out. I was like, good for you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what about luck. the uh, the bass solo for the Chainsaw song from uh, Zombies? Zombies yeah. Out. Yeah. That was. Uh, I don't understand how fingers can move that fast. Right. Really. It wasn't. It was a guy <laughs> sleeping on his keyboard. It was like, oh, it's the same composer. It's the yeah, same composer. It was the same composer. It's the same, <laughs> same composer as Maniac Mansion did Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. So it's oh, I didn't like, know that. Oh, really? Yeah, it's <laughs> something about his style. It just does not translate to it called? metal Fat, instruments. Was Fathead Music? No, it was, uh, the Fat Man the was fat his name. Man. That was his name. Yep. It, it sounds like what you guys are saying is sometimes you're doing more of just like a, like a straight-up faithful kind of recreation of a thing, but in metal, and sometimes it's just an inspiration of a starting point for what then becomes much more y your own thing in the first place. It sounds like there's a, maybe a percentage thing. Where sometimes it's 70% you guys and 30% the original thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's oftentimes it's... Um, uh, you'll take the chord progression from the song, and those will be your boundaries. Be like, write a metal song in this chord progression, stay relatively faithful to the leads, and then just take it from there on your own. That's essentially how we write. Yeah, I think our big thing is making sure the leads are the leads, mm -hmm. and then everything else can just be us. You know, as long as we stick within the the uh, the feel and the chord progression, like you said, we can we can do whatever we want. As long as that lead is the same, people are gonna be like, oh, that's Mario. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's that simple. Yeah. And that's how you stand out, and that's how you make your own sound. For sure. Yep. I. Real quick before we before we play a couple more tracks here, because uh, you guys just ran off with all kinds of interesting things, and I'm glad you did that. Um, but when you're uh, <laughs> when when you're doing uh, uh, solos, how much of that is improvised when you're actually recording, and how much of particularly like a, a complicated guitar solo have you got completely mapped out? Um, it depends. If the song has, there are some songs that will have something really complicated in them that I can turn into a solo where it just if I didn't do everything that was in the original it wouldn't sound faithful enough mm -hmm. but there are other ones the ones I prefer where I'm like alright I can just rip over this part mm -hmm. and I usually just um, I'll improvise something then I'll do it again and again and again until I have something that I actually want to track um, I think it comes well, back to the hook thing, right? Where if the if the solo part is something that's really catchy, yeah, and you're like oh, I, I make I got to make sure that I at least hit this one motif in the solo. That that's the thing when it has motifs, yeah. you can't really like stray from it, or else you know someone will be disappointed. Right. But um, <laughs> someone on YouTube in the comments will call us out for not hitting that note that was there. <laughs> that's always how it is. Oh, we've had paragraphs <laughs> written to us about yeah. a note before. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like Xenoblade, that's probably my favorite solo, mm -hmm. um, just because I got to write it. <laughs> that was, um, what song was that? You Will Know Our Names. You Will Know Our Names. Mm. Was that the one that we play live? Yep. Yeah. So would you also say that that, because 
when you listen to that song, it sounds like a Kill Switch Engage song. Would you say that was one that was written for a guitar specifically? For sure. This guitar mm. on the song is a ton of it. Yeah. Xenoblade yeah. yeah. soundtrack's awesome. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Splatoon song because I promised Connor we would, and oh, uh, okay. and, and then we'll uh, get into and like I said I haven't heard this one yet I'm excited and then we'll get into some audience questions and guys in in the audience thanks so much for being patient with us. I haven't played this game yet. I'm kind of excited now. This is a really fun track. Uh, Connor, why'd you pick this one? Um, oh, hold on. There we go. Um, you know, I really like, uh, first of all, I, I have a soft spot for talk boxes. Um, so I kind of like that line in there. Um, I've always kind of figured that eventually electronic music would win me over because it kind of reminds me of talk box stuff, but it never really did. Um, so I don't know. There's something that's kind of fun about using the like your voice as an instrument and fusing it with an instrument. I think that's really cool. That's why I like Peter that, Frampton. Exactly right. Um, um, but it also just has like a kind of like a driving punk structure that I that I found really cool. Like really heavy on like um, like bass and power chords and stuff. Like it was yeah. I don't know. I uh, I really dug it. It was really cool. Thank you. Yeah. What's uh, my favorite part about that one is. Since it is all talk box um, related, and the lyrics are unintelligible, I couldn't find any proper lyrics to it. So, the person we collabed with, um, who goes by longest solo ever, we just said, "Hey, just make up a bunch of words, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, we will try to decipher what you said and put those as lyrics." Yeah. <laughs> and we made sure in the title of the video to put official lyrics because there's no <laughs> lyrics for it. That's so, so funny. We, we got the official lyrics that make no sense whatsoever. And also, that, since that the song awesome. is called, <laughs> since the song is called, the song is called clickbait. So the thumbnail has like. Dream, Amaranth, <laughs> and a bunch of Twitch streamers in it. Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. I didn't see yeah. that. And then writing official lyrics Thumbnail. in the title makes it clickbaity itself. Right. That's uh, a wonderful the whole, meta the whole joke. Thing was as mad as we could do. You know, we, we kept trying to find different levels of, of clickbait to put on top of the, the whole thing. Nicely so. done. <laughs> okay. Now I know this is for sure my favorite of your tracks because the entire project now just has like a whole thing I like about it. <laughs> sort of like a meta joke. <laughs> in a nutshell, yeah. though, we're kind of just, you know, if you see us live ever, um, we're like half comedy, half music. Like our live yeah. show is all driven by um, like a virtual game show host that we created that talks to the crowd for us. So we don't oh, do any that's talking so cool. to this, this guy projected on a video that talks to everybody and, and interacts with people. So. Um, since the beginning, we've always just been like more about the comedy elements for live before we started doing videos. Um, and I think that kind of comes across in the videos a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not as much as live, though. Live is just like super heavy handed. Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah, worst joke cool, ever. Yeah, I've been wanting to go to MAGFest for years, and I've and I've never done it. And I I know I know some folks in this industry now that that I that, that play and make music that keep going to MAGFest. I've always wanted to go. So hopefully, I can see you guys live at some point at some show. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mag Mag's a great place to see it too because the stage is amazing. Yeah, uh, where where are you out of? Uh, we're in Kansas City. Okay, Kansas City. Okay. And so could it be and a I'm lot. Portland, Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Con Portland. Connor's in Portland. 
Well, they're, see you We're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, get a plane ticket. <laughs> Hey, I we'll go ahead to um, we'll go ahead and go to audience questions in a second. I wanted to ask you guys if you talk a little bit about while I'm thinking about it. I just watching that video reminded me of this uh, about how you achieve your production quality. Uh, where where exactly you shoot? Where did those really sweet lights that you guys have in the background now uh, come from? Right here. This is uh this is my basement, and we shoot right back here. I just put black curtains on walls, and we have some lights behind us. Um, I learned video production pretty much for this project. I never did anything video related before this. So wow. um, as you can tell by the early YouTube videos that we put out were really just, you can tell I was learning as I was going. Um, same thing with audio, well, audio production I've been doing for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but the video production, yeah, that I learned it for this project. Um, and uh, now it, I love doing the video side of the, the, um, the whole process. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's very professionally done. You've really figured it out. Because, honestly, what I thought was going on was that you guys were doing it yourselves, and then you finally hired somebody. Like, that's how good it is now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank that you. That means a lot. Yeah, we, we did upgrade uh, equipment, and when I moved, we were able to, to really segregate a space in my basement that it's always set up ready to go. Hmm. Um, and my drum set's on wheels, so, you know, we just wheel it out. The next guy comes in, and we, we just shoot like that, so... A good, it's very simple. A That's good great. amount of the work is just getting it streamlined in the first place. Right, yeah. Like, we um, we do a new song every week, so all the tracking is done remotely. Um, that's how we collaborate in general. Um, so it's all ready to go every week. We don't even, like, record together anymore. Never. Not, e not <laughs> even, no. We don't. Wow. Ever. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just, I'll get a song, or we'll figure out what song we want to do. I'll uh, I'll write drums over it and I'll just send it to Jeff. He just I don't give him any notes really or anything, and I, or maybe I'll be like stop here and do this thing. But usually it's just I'll just send it to Jeff and be like, have fun with this, and he'll track all the guitars, just write random stuff, and he'll send it to Mike. Mike does all the bass, um, and with the beauty of cloud storage, I already have the files as soon as they're done tracking, so um, I, I can just mix it from there. And by the time I get the song, once you're done with it, if I don't like the song, it's too late to say no. Right, yeah, so <laughs> we don't have a choice. It's like you have to make it good. So is yeah. the main reason you guys aren't in the same room very often anymore because you're paranoid about snowstorms? All yeah. the time, yeah. Rhode Island, man. <laughs> no, no. We actually had a crazy, we had like no snow this winter, except for, that's why it was such except a big deal. You. Except for the, the two times we were supposed to come on here are the only two snowstorms we had for the whole year. Um, so yeah, I assumed you were having like weekly where you're like, oh, we got another <laughs> snowstorm. We got to we got to cut it short tonight. I'm like, I feel like if they were going to blow me off, they just wouldn't show up. I don't understand. <laughs> dude, no, it's you. It's dude, you. That, that's what I was thinking. I didn't I do like, it. I'm not the weather like, wizard. Definitely thinks we're going to blow them right, off. Right, right. Or we're trying to. Oh, which which, by the way, um, right now, it's not too bad. We can hang on longer. Um, totally up to you guys. No pressure. I, I was just joking. Uh, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I see your face. Connor, let's go to uh, some audience questions, sir. I see some super chats there. Uh, certainly, yeah. Uh, our f uh, hey, Liam, Gene, you're going to be acquainted with some of the memes we've got in this community. So uh, the first super chat is a $2 super chat from Billy the Kid Lawrence, and he says, does Liam and Genie like White Castle? I've only had it frozen. I've never had the actual White Castle before. <laughs> yeah, same. Never had it ever. Never had so, it ever. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I used to think, I used to assume that White Castle was gross because when I think just the word white with burgers makes me think of cartilage. <laughs> so I was assumed it was terrible. <laughs> cartilage yeah. burgers? Cartil it's just like, it's oops, all, like, it's oops like all cartilage. It's just like wicked bouncy. <laughs> Yeah, when people are like, yeah, I eat like ten of those burgers. You're like, how? Like, you are disgusting. You're a disgusting <laughs> animal. What are you doing? I had never had it, and then and we we still can't figure out how this happened. But for some reason, on what was it, Connor? The uh, the the Doctor Strange two review, I think the spoiler cast. Uh, we do mostly superhero stuff here, and uh, so so our, our our biggest stuff is you know, new superhero movies and that kind of thing. And uh, we had a big crowd for that, and the last fifteen minutes of that video is just people throwing a super chats making jokes about white castle i can't figure out where it came from i don't know what the genesis of it was but jason and i when we were in florida last summer finally went to a white castle did a live stream from there trying it for the first time and going eh it's not that great 
does it taste just like the frozen ones? Because the frozen ones are pretty low tier. I've never had that either, but low tier Don't is precisely have. how I would describe what I had. Yeah. I'm... Uh, speaking of fast food places, can you guys please explain the Taco Bell thing? Because I don't know what's going on there. You know, we told before the interview to not ask us about Taco Bell. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. We don't, we, don't have, we don't have to do that. Question. We do not have to get to Then stop um, wearing the t-shirts. What, what, what do you want from me? Um, you guys wear them constantly. They're in a bunch of the thumbnails. You just ate Taco what? Bell today. I, I, had to, I had to tell Mike to stop eating Taco Bell before this interview. He had yeah. it right on his lap. Um, what was the genesis of Taco Bell? Um, So... You know, I think it just had to do a lot with the live show, and we wanted to just make stupid jokes. And I think we wanted our character to be eating Taco Bell for no reason. I oh, really think that was it. I remember it. we had one of my friends fill in on bass for a show. He could only learn like half oh, the songs in time. Right. So I was like, oh "How are we? God. How are we going to fill out the rest of the time?" And I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what if we just play Taco Bell commercials in between every song?" <laughs> so live, we had a bunch of Taco Bell commercials, That's right. and then oh that God. that That's turned so into. Funny going all in on Taco Bell to pretending we're endorsed by Taco Bell. Yeah. That's fantastic. Which is really funny because I've learned that it's really easy to get endorsed by Taco Bell, but instead we just keep telling people we are and tagging Taco Bell. And one day my goal is to get a cease and desist from Taco Bell. From Taco Bell. <laughs> We, we have this gag, too. It's one of our live videos where our live narrator goes onto the screen and he opens up Twitter on his phone. And he's like, you know, go tag Taco Bell and tell him Lame Genie sent you. And oh, he's yeah. like doing it on the phone and everything. It's, it go, usually goes over pretty well. <laughs> yeah, so after our, our shows, we just look at Twitter and there's just like a ton of tags of Taco Bell with us. <laughs> That's the goal. And we also just li we like Taco Bell, I think. Taco yeah. Bell's awesome. Yeah. Connor, so how do you guys feel about uh, the yeah. quesarito being removed from the menu? Like that's that's uh, that kind of cut deep for me personally. Oh, hey, I'm not here to talk politics, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say, Cap? Oh, I was just gonna say it sounds like they have the same history with Taco Bell that I do with Mountain Dew. Right. It sounds like it, yeah. Um, yeah although I don't think they went to a food coma. Yeah. And I don't think they've had cancer. That well, that's true. <laughs> But, no. but, any, but anyway, <laughs> we're, not, we're not here to talk about me. Connor, what is uh, our, our next Super Chat cert? Dang, Jason. <laughs> we're pretty sure Mountain Dew gave me cancer. I'm fine now. It's, it's, it's he really good. went there with that one. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Connor. Savage. All right, so... Um, I went to a fictional what? coma in a, in, a, in, a, in a series I did over Mountain Dew, and then a decade later I got cancer, probably from Mountain Dew. Go, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> Is that um, a fictional story or a real story? I still can't tell. No, it's no, it's no, it's a true story. So, so I, I did a web series called Spawn Year where I go into a, uh, into, into a sugar coma because I drink too much Mountain Dew, and then I have to review Spawn comics every day for a year, and then like eight years later, uh, I get actual cancer, and we're oh pretty sure God. it's because I drank too much Mountain Dew. Huh. I'm sorry to hear that, but if it's because of the do, I mean, don't do it. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't do soda of any kind anymore. I'm really careful with sugar. Yeah, I've changed my whole diet. I'm in, I'm in much, much better shape now. But yeah, I had ultimately no ill effects except I had to have a, a surgery on my kidney, but I lost no part nice. of my kidney. I got really, really super lucky with it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Anyway, right. sorry, I did not mean to make this about myself and my very bizarre history with Mountain Dew. Yeah, well, you can't just say I have a history of Mountain Dew and not explain, right? It's the same thing yeah. with Taco Bell. If anyone has like a, 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 a like a history with a, a food item, you have to go into detail. <laughs> It's true. Plus, this is all Jason's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really was. I'm sorry. Kind of throw another question at us, man. Yeah. Um, what is a super chat? Um, he sends in a two dollar super chat and he says, "What is this? Is a, it's a pretty big one, guys. What is the purpose of music?" Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Did you see him just get gobsmacked? <laughs> Uh, Mike just goes, whoa. Uh, Man, there really isn't any purpose, is there? Yeah, there is. It's so you can play, you can play, no, it's so you can play shows late on the weekends and on the ride home you get Taco yeah. Bell. Hold on, let me, let me grab, uh, with the boys. let me get chat GPT for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you my official answer. So what is the question? Make sure you get Dan in there, too. Is the purpose of music? Yeah. You guys are getting oh, really guess deep and philosophical. The client side error has occurred. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to answer that later. Um, what is the point of music? Um, 
I can answer what the point of video game. What is it? Do. What is the point of it for you guys? Why do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> about, honestly, I just, we were I talking like about it. that today. I was like, you know, I really didn't want to play drums today, and then Mike came over, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I like doing this. I remember that now. <laughs> this is serotonin, probably. Right. Like, it think, makes, it makes it feel good. The dopamine. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. there's a little dopamine in it, especially. Mm. I think you know we've being in local bands all the time and writing original music for what 10, 15 years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not that old. <laughs> Speak for <laughs> um, you know, I think there is something to the original music, but I think I really started to love music when we started to do the covers. Yeah, I yeah. think, you know, I think a big part of music for us is fan interaction. And I think of when we play and we play for people that have never seen us and you can see them laughing and stuff in the audience. I think that's what really is like, the purpose of music <laughs> for me at this point. They're just laughing at, at us. us yeah. <laughs> no, I like that, though. I love that. I want that. Um, in a general sense, I'd say the point of music is uh, it makes life way less boring. It's true. It's another medium to, like, you know, have going at all times and spruce up everything, you know? Yeah, just imagine if everything was silent all the time, like right now. True. Dead air, just, <laughs> it's not fun. Mm. I mean, how much more necessary does it feel sometimes in video games than even in film and other media? Right. Hundred percent. I've done sorry. I've done a lot of well not a lot but I've done some film scoring and some commercial uh, jingles and everything and you know people send you a product that's dry no no audio um, and then you you know when you do add your flair to it you're like oh all right you know <laughs> this is a, I can either make this really dark really fast or really light you know if I'm doing yeah. commercial and I put all these you know horror chords over it and they're not going to be too happy with that. So. It's crazy <laughs> how much control you have over it's mood tough. and emotion. Right. What was the weird crawfish cartoon that you did? I think it was Adult Swim, maybe? It was Adult Swim. It was, um, oh my god. Swams. Swams. It's called Swams. So if you go to Adult Swim or HBO, I think, has it now. You can watch Swams. It's eight episodes. Have you ever seen, it was like an, it was an older video, but someone recut the trailer for Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, yeah. And just put scary music to it, and right. it changes it completely. Right. <laughs> I saw that in my feed, and I never clicked on it. I need to do that. Click it. That one's really mean? good. I... I also like the uh, the Shining uh, uh, as like a family film where it's yeah. like he's... like the acoustic music <laughs> over it. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah, yeah, Peter Gabriel. It's really yep. good. <laughs> um, and... Brightburn nineteen. Oh, sorry. What was that, Jason? And I feel like I feel like people have made uh, like video games and not put music behind it, and it's it's still wonderful. But then you know people have also uh, made video games and not put music behind it, and it really like kind of needs it right like and then, like, I think, like just play <laughs> baseball 2000 or, and... <laughs> or mario golf <laughs> yeah oh, no, just yeah. wait yeah. yes yeah but are you talking but about then, baseball like, simulator like, 2000 yeah but then like a, a lot of uh like shooters don't have a lot of music and it's like it's okay but it builds right. suspense well, I think like they have also... like ambience in there though usually yeah. right i think there's a I think because gaming and music went hand in hand, when when a game that's done artistically and they choose not to use music and it's very intentional, I think that's amazing. But like, you know, I, I played so many shooters where like like take Far Cry for example, right? You play Far Cry, um, Far Cry was fine, but then they came out with Blood Dragon that was all synthwave driven and it's like, Whoa, this is this is way cooler than Far Cry was, you know? So <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm with you on that. I think the silence can is is music in itself, you know. Oh yeah, um, right now is, I want to yeah. I want to uh, recut the trailer for any Friday the Thirteenth movie <laughs> and just put Curb Your Enthusiasm music. In. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Serling's Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. So, um, yeah um, I mean, I'm a movie guy primarily, and I know that like you know silent movies. You know they have some of the best musical scores ever, right? I think like the Metropolis music is incredible. But yeah. I also went back to um, and I was doing some research uh, and I watched The Passion of Joan of Arc, and they have an option on the Blu-ray that I have where you can just watch it without any music because a lot of movie houses just didn't have a musical option. That movie's great. I will never watch it without music though again because it was a very long, very dry 85 minutes. Um, yeah, and no, I love music uh, when it's accompaniment or whether it's on its own. Like it, it's so versatile. 
trying to think what oh. I watched recently where I felt... Oh, I watched uh, Skin and Marink was a horror movie that just came out not too long ago, mm. um, which I liked. I know everyone hated it, but <laughs> um, that was very tough to get through because it was just a bunch of still shots, no music, no anything, and um, that was a slog, but I think it had a good payoff. It's a mm. slog, but I loved it. <laughs> I, I, I almost went and saw that. My brother, he, he, just, he watched the short film and went, okay, this will freak me out. I can't do it. Right. Um, it was one of the most tense movie experiences I've had in a long time, but you have to really uh, be aware that you have to dedicate time to it and to not shut it off because you're going to want to after about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, here it's pretty pretty cool, though. Yeah. Um, Speaking of uh, music and film, Brightburn1985 sends us a $5 super chat. Um, and he asks, have you guys ever listened to the song Original Sin by Taylor Dane? It's an earworm, and it was on the soundtrack for Alec Baldwin's The Shadow film. No. no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if it was on that soundtrack, I'm sure I've heard it once or twice, but I don't right off know it myself either. Well, sorry, yeah. Bright Burns, but thanks a ton for the super chat. Have you guys ever um, seen that movie? Have you ever seen the 90s Shadow? No. I haven't seen it in forever. It's, it's, but... it's, actually, it's actually decent. It's actually worth watching. And that is uh, it's supposed to be the, the next uh, movie up, weirdly, for Superhero Rewind, although I might do a Batman or two this month before I finally get to it. I've been wanting you uh, to do that for Rewind. Yeah, well, I've done it before, but I, it, it's a, it's a re, re-review that somebody requested, yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, I lasted it like 10 years ago. Guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and play a Zombies Ate My Neighbors uh, cover now because that's the thing that got me into, uh, into Lane Genie. And uh, we're going to play the track that uh, these guys were talking about earlier uh, is, is being kind of a difficult thing to cover. Uh, so excited to hear you guys talk about this after we listen to some of it. So I get PTSD uh, from being a kid playing this level and being uh, chased around by the, the chainsaw guys. Uh, it, it, it's horrifying. That is a real tough level to be like your fourth level. Yeah, for sure. Talk to Mike about that. He's the, the resident Zombies Ate My Neighbors champ. Sure, what do you want to know? <laughs> so have you beaten it? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. man. I, I, st I still can't get all the, way, all the way through it. I've never done it. It's uh, it's a lot easier if you do the whole game all at once rather than using a password. I think that's the first thing I'd say. I don't play it with passwords because you lose all your stuff. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Can you speedrun it? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I think okay. I tried to get like a crazy high score once. I think it came out to like... High. It was like 800,000 and change or so. so. Wow. Okay, let me pick your brain for a second. What is your preferred uh, system, first of all? Like, like what's your, what's your favorite way to play that game? Uh, the best and easiest way is on Super Nintendo. Yeah, because you've got uh, the six-button configuration. The six-button? Uh, I think you can... The six button. No, I think you have the four buttons. Well, the four, then, uh, yeah. Four. I guess, yeah. Do the triggers do anything? But I guess what, I, what I'm just saying, you don't have the only three because it's kind of complicated on the Genesis to even play that game if you've only got the three buttons. Yeah, the framing for the game on Genesis is weird because you have a one of the triggers actually pulls up the map on the Super Nintendo, and then for Sega, 
they actually have like a little toolbar on the side that has the map in it. So it kind of make it makes the frame almost like a really Front. long rectangle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had forgotten because I mostly play. We've got a couple of main machines, and I mostly play it on a like stand up arcade now. And I wish we'd had one for for that game because it, it, it's it's kind of perfectly laid out for an arcade machine. Oh yeah, no, that'd be a major a major quality. Wait, was that right released there. on arcade? It never was. I don't think so. Oh, that would have been an awesome arcade game. But I went to a part part of the reason I did that is because I went to a pinball convention a few years ago where somebody had made a custom one and it's gorgeous. I'll send you guys a picture of it at some point. I got to, I got to play that way. And somebody just put a, a I can't remember if it was a Genesis or a Super Nintendo in like, like inside the case. Mm-hmm. And okay. it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I have seen one of those. I think they have it at uh one of our our local uh, arcades at the Free Play Arcade. I believe they have, like, it's kind of like the Player's Choice 10, but with Super Nintendo games. There. Yeah. You know that game's there. Oh, cool. That's really cool. So, I uh, was was that the most difficult track to put together on that album? No. No, no. <laughs> there's, there's some things on that album that are, like, inhuman for musicians, you know? There's, there's a lot of... Uh... A lot of clashy stuff that you just got to find a spot for because it's very important yeah. to the soundtrack. So yeah. <laughs> you need to get it in there, whether it fits or not. So you know, if you listen to it, I, I think there's some. What song was? Is the it the pyramid one? one maybe? No, that that one was more natural. Because like when you say Doctor Tongue was well, a bit wicked hard. When he says inhuman, he doesn't mean like it's hard to play. But like putting it together, it's hard to make metal. it sound good. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> yeah. to make it sound good. Right. Because it's it's like rather than being musical, it's just like putting horror motifs over other horror motifs. Right. And some, yeah, sometimes yeah. they don't fit, but man, they're crammed in there. Well, yeah. and it's not an OST that gets covered that often. No, because it's 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 wild and having, I think we use the theremin on a lot of it because yeah. of the spooky aspect of it. Because you need. <laughs> You need that, like you need something in there that makes it spooky to, to feel like zombies, and you have to get like the baby saying "uh oh," ah! <laughs> like all that stuff is like super necessary to the soundtrack, you know? Yeah, fun fact about that one too is that whole album was Patreon funded. It was, yep, yep. Um, it was a while ago. We were doing um, we had a Patreon tier where you could purchase a cover essentially. And a couple of people bought that whole soundtrack. Wow. And we actually met them at MAGFest in 2021 or 2020. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, which was one of the most memorable moments to me of playing music live was seeing the two people who funded the album in the audience dressed as the characters from Zombies Ain't My Neighbors and going wow. around with a chainsaw in the pit. Yeah, just mowing people down with his chainsaw. It was awesome. And everyone was playing along and stuff. It was it was, it was so good. That's amazing. That's really Panther cool. Bags, dude. Panther, Panther and Bags, dude. Panther and Bags. Shout out. Uh, so with with Patreon now, uh, am I right that you guys don't do, uh, don't do that anymore, but you just do kind of like random draw for uh, for covers? I think I, I saw that somewhere. Random draw for random stuff because <laughs> doing the um, doing the drawings for covers, we ended up getting like a pretty decent sized backlog because of our schedule and um, things we plan on releasing. Mm-hmm. It it just got really difficult to keep up with everything. And, right, and and you guys know it too. Like you know, one of the ways to to work the YouTube algorithm in, in your favor is to stay current. Um, so, you know, games would come out, a new game would come out and we're like, all right, we have to do this, um, you know, a week after release date, a, re- a week after we can get the OST. But then we also have, uh, like sick Patreon requests that are like, you know, Metal Gear from NES, which, you know, or, or anything like that, where it's like, yes, we would love to cover it, but like in order to keep growing, it's hard to fit that stuff into a schedule that you almost are forced to do, you know? Yeah, like say if we did a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's songs, and then we're, we'd do a DOS cover. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a, like an Oregon Trail cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it didn't really work out. It became a lot of work. So now we just will randomly be like, all right, we'll do a drawing to give out a USB stick. Right, well, even at this point, I think a lot of, you know, 
in the comments of some of our videos if someone's like, oh, you guys should try this one. You know, we'll look at it and we'll have it in our heads. And if we have like a low week, we'll be like, oh, you know, that guy really wanted this. So it's not really more of like a, a patron thing at this point. It's kind of just like just kind of spur of the moment at this point. And like Jeff said, it was really hard to keep up and we didn't want people to, to keep sticking out with the patron stuff. If we weren't going to be able to deliver their, their material. I, I can relate to that. Yeah, it's tough. Absolutely. We still, we still have one to release that we recorded yeah. like half a year ago, yeah. but it it needs vocals, and I need to get the perfect person to sing on it. Right, so we're still looking. You'll see. We, we do a uh, request show weekly where we review stuff uh, that people request on Patreon. We have this very same problem where not a lot of people tend to care about those videos, but we make them because uh, pe people pay for them. And uh, and it's fun because you know it, it keeps. I'm sure you guys have this too. Like like it it, it kind of it keeps you like spreading your wings and trying things you wouldn't try otherwise. Absolutely. There there was so many Patreon covers that we would have done if it wasn't Patreon. You know, um, like uh, Um Jammer Lammy is one of those games where that cover came out really cool, and I've never heard the music for that game. It's a uh, Parappa the Rapper too, right? Uh, essentially, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's, there was a bunch of covers that came out. Um, that people wanted that was like holy crap this soundtrack's awesome you know and, and it, like you said it, it really like expands like your what you would normally listen to anyway some of them did well too yeah like, for sure yakuza did well yeah um ahead on our way obviously did well yep wasn't uh um, what was the uh, oh, shit. never mind i can't think of it. <laughs> what were... <sighs> there's too many there's more of them that kills it on spotify and i can't think of the name of it yakuza. Right now. it's not yakuza it was before that um, but I think we did like what twenty of them, maybe more. Yeah, you can't always know what's gonna hit. No, it's years. it's really random. It can get really um, random unless unless you play the the what's releasing this week game, then you kind of know that's gonna do well. And you know the the whole methodology that like the past couple of years have been like we need to make sure we hit these current games, um, and then you know we can stop peppering in the classic soundtracks with those covers to kind of get new people to listen to the old stuff type of thing. And also, if that's all you do, you'll probably get burnt out on it. Oh, for sure. Or, or yeah, I would yeah. be con I would be concerned that you would, because uh, that, that happens with me with review, too. Yeah, I gotta go back to retro stuff and stuff. But I will tell you guys, and, like, you know, I don't know if you'll ever do this, but I, I, I decided to write down, like, what's the one thing I would ask these guys to do if I got to pick something? And uh, I, I, I would have you guys go and look at the uh, OST for the 16-bit Cool Spot game. Uh, that has a, a <laughs> great that soundtrack. Game. And that I seems that perfect for you guys. Dude, I... Mm -hmm. I think about that game once in a while and i remember it being i used to love the game and i it's one of those games that i bet as an adult is probably way harder than i remember oh, yeah, yeah. all i remember is the thumbtacks yeah being everywhere mm -hmm. and i remember it's when you, the first time i ever saw that game one i was blown away that seven up had a game because i love seven up uh mm -hmm. and two it looked so good for that yeah. era I was like blown yeah. away at how Very that strange was. Art style. That was like the Sega version of Donkey Kong Country for me. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> That's probably why I liked it so much. Of course, yeah, it was on right. Super Nintendo also, but uh, Genesis was the way That's I played right. it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and I mean, its only competition was like Yo Noid. <laughs> so... <laughs> but it was also a lot better than those other mascot games. Yeah, because they because yeah, you had the Chester Cheetah games, they kind of sucked. Yeah. Yo Noid. <laughs> Yo Noid. The Noid from Domino's. All right. Yep. The Pizza Hut got a game. I'm sure it would be amazing. Guys, yeah, I, it, it's it's time <laughs> to so. it's time to so. go to a quick break. I can you guys stick around, or do you need to get going? Yeah, we'll stick around, stick around yeah. for a bit. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna play. Uh, Jason asked me to do this. I'm gonna play some of the uh, the Sonic Two album you guys did, or medley, I should say, uh, for, during the break, and we'll come back in let's say four minutes. Sure. Yeah. Four minutes. Well, thanks again, guys, for being with us. We'll see you in just a little bit.
All right, folks, we're back. It's time for the second half or so of the Captain Logan Show. And uh, I want to ask you guys right away, since we were playing some uh, Sonic 2 there, and what you guys did with that medley is nuts, by the way. Uh, favorite Sonic track down the line, starting with Mike. Go. Uh, from any Sonic game or Sonic 2? From any Sonic game. Let's see. It's got to be, I mean, it's got to be Flying Battery from Sonic. And yes! Damn. You know Damn. it. Damn. Same. I mean... It's probably the same for me, but if you're going down the line, oh, I skipped. Sorry, dude. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I mean, I mean, unless you wanted to all be flying battery, I'd, I'd put Chemical Plant up there. I agree. You know? I, I think Chemical Chemical Plant is kind of like my Sonic, my Mega Man Two, where I don't want to say I like it as much as I do because everyone loves Chemical Plant. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So Flying Chemical Battery plant, is in my top battery. three, but my absolute favorite is Marble Zone, and you guys have not done a, a cover from Marble Zone. Nope. Is that uh, the first game? It was the first game. Yeah, yeah. it's the second level. Second zone. Hey, do you ever use Slack? I don't know what that is right now. Damn. All right, so Slack is like Discord. It's a messaging thing. But when you get a message, it makes this sound. And every time I think of Marble Zone. It sounds like Marble Zone. It's just, it's just a did it it What? Like it's do it. Yeah. It's the beginning of Marble Zone. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't do like a snare. It's more like... Oh, God. Oh, I weird. Think I heard that. He's going to look up the Slack. Yeah, sound. look up the Slack message sound. Uh, I was just going to play the beginning of Marble Zone so people knew what we were talking about, but yeah, I'll look for no, that. No. Uh, no, play Slack instead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. let's listen to the Slack soundtrack. Sure. No, it's Ten two hours. seconds long, folks. And we got him. That's it. That's all it's I just had. that. It just reminds me of the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's syncopated the same way. Revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> same tempo. <laughs> That's great. That song has, like, a romanticness to it, doesn't it? Makes it want, does. Makes think, me want to slow down. Right, it makes me want to eat, like, pasta in a restaurant with, like, my wife, you know? Mm, Drink some for wine. Sure. I, <laughs> but I think about it every time, and I'm like, I can't say that at work. That's way too weird. <laughs> no, it's not, dude. Because no one will know what I'm talking We're about. programmers. Well, and I've heard that. 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 <laughs> I've heard that covered a million different ways. There, there are just so many different uh, ways to make that sound good, but I, the, but, but I hear it done in like Spanish guitar a lot. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I. It's coming. <laughs> I, yes. I think either uh, Casino Night or um, um, Metropolis. Yeah, I like Metropolis a lot. Yep. That's one of my favorite parts to play live. I, yeah. we, in our Sonic 2, we play that live. Uh, we usually end the set with it because it's like 10 minutes long, but every time we get to Metropolis, it's like the best part in the whole yeah. song. I love that, that. It's just the other thing that I could, it's really tough to compare Sonic songs to figure out what is the best. It's just like, what do you like the most? Because right. they're all yeah. so good. Yep. And they're all sound, like they're all, it covers a really wide range of genres. Absolutely. Too. Yep. Yeah. Sonic soundtrack, it reminds me of, like, if I'm showing someone a movie, in every part, I'm like, hey, this is my favorite part. <laughs> my favorite part. <laughs> uh, Jason, you have another good question for these guys. Uh. Okay, you you go and look, and Connor, why don't you throw us another super chat? Uh, um. Sure. Um, <clears throat> a TH1 gives us a $5 super chat. Uh, Tom asks, what would it take for you guys to make the theme song for the Captain Logan show? Uh, what And also, what favorite video game movie soundtracks uh, you guys rock? So real quick before they answer that, this is actually a thing I wanted to, I wanted to ask them. Do you, are you guys aware of where the theme song for the Captain Logan show comes from? Because it is video game music. No. It is no. from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh. oh. See, I haven't played that that much. Uh, in the arcade, I played it, but again, I think I played it in the arcade, or was that one? But you can't hear any music in the arcade. You know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I use for this show is, is Capcom music. Just that's to give awesome. it kind of a that's uniformity. Right. And I'm a, I'm a jazz guy. A, a friend, a band friend of ours called The Mad Gear just did a cover of Wolverine's theme from that game, and it's yeah. a really good cover. Go oh, cool. Mm. But yeah, maybe maybe we'll do something. We'll, we'll throw you a bone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. That wasn't me asking, well, or someone else asking for me. 
that was just would you want it to be its own thing or would you want it to be that song but metal that would be cool it'd be neat to see if you guys could manage that because that's more of a jazz thing hmm jazz is hard <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like jazz. You guys yeah. are so profound okay. this evening. Jazz, jazz is hard. Yep. <laughs> Handsome Dan. Here, here, here I'll, I'll, I'll play you a little bit more of this track again, and you guys can, you guys can see if you can imagine it as a metal song. Now, this, this would work well. It's not like it doesn't have good sounds like modern prog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of is like that. Uh, right. It sounds like uh, like Arch Echo yeah. or any of those bands. So uh, that would be sick. Yeah. Jason, it's like when we did the three podcast theme cover. You know, yeah. it's like kind of has that same like funky jazz swing to it. I mean, real quick, you know what I think would be cool if you took. Like the like the like the thirteen note long, to talk a song, and turn that into a, like a big thing. Oh wow, that's a really interesting idea. Do yeah. you guys know about to talk a song? No. Is this is this is the song that uh, the composer Kasumi Tataka, like, kind of hides in all of his games as like like a secret? an Easter egg? Yeah. Is that like the? It's a really good. Idea. I remember it from I think like Yoshi's story. Yeah, it's in it's in Yoshi's story. Okay, yeah. Oh my God! So that must be a really deep meme for the people that know about it. Then could you? uh, Are you able to play it on that side quick? Because it is. It's kind. It's just. It's very silly. I mean, if you're asking us if we want to cash in on a meme, (laughs) it's not. It's not really a meme. I like. It's kind of just a thing. Well, then make sure you visit our channel on Friday where we have a a meme coming out. Oh yeah. We just recorded the video tonight before the interview. So, any fans of Subway Surfer out there? There's the Luigi's Mansion version. This is like a minute long. Okay. I'm just trying to think, because the problem is it's differently orchestrated every time it shows up, so yeah. I'm, I'm not sure but where that's to write. A, that's a great idea to do, like, even uh, yeah, a medley X. of all the places that that shows up, combine those all into one song would be really awesome. Copy. Oh. Sounds like that, that's, it it in, it is. that's it in Mario Paint. I think it is in Mario Paint. Yep. This is where it is. <laughs> the timing of that. The suspense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a neat idea, idea, Jason. Yeah, Jason's done a video on that. Done and done. <laughs> hey, we didn't mean to bring you guys on here and just like beg you to do different tracks. By the way, where you know you're no, busy. No, you see, I get a, like even from my daughter, I get a ton of ideas of songs to do from her because I want to know what what she's watching or what she's playing because the, you kids know way more about games than we do. So. Yeah. Now, importantly, so like, Jason's not going to be indicative of his generation exactly. <laughs> He's no, in a little bit know, of a but, different... But, you know, like, like my kid showed me Sally Face for the first time, and that soundtrack is great. You know, it's, uh, the whole game was made by one guy, and um, we, we ended up covering that. And Omori, she showed me, and that soundtrack was really cool, and we did a song from that. And so, you know, I, I appreciate the, the insight on different things like that. You know, I, no. I, I had another idea, but you said that you were going to do, like, a meme thing, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going <laughs> to... What's the meme? I I think it would be funny if you did Sanctuary Garden. What's that? Uh, from oh. Earthbound, the doodle-doodle-doo. Oh, that's right, yeah. I, yeah, they've done an Earthbound. You, you guys have done at least one Earthbound one track. One Earthbound, but, yeah. Hmm. Would that be a speed run? <laughs> yeah. So, so we have a when we were a, a band that released mostly albums and not videos, we put out three albums called Speed Runs, where we covered all of the shortest songs that we could find from games. Um, so I think Speed Runs one, oh, Speed Runs one has like what twenty songs on it, and they're all like two seconds long. Yeah. Uh, I, so we have a couple of albums of just like super super short songs. They're all called Speed Runs. Yeah, we have Speed Runs, then Speed Runs two, 
troll. Yeah. And then speedrun three, three fast, three furious. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to play another track right now that I was shocked you guys did, uh, partly because just the idea of turning this into metal is is nuts, and when you hear it, it, it is nuts, but also uh, the, the fact that this is what you guys did and not anything else from the series, I hope you guys will come back to the series at some point, but uh, I'm not even going to tell anybody what it is, I'm just going to play it, it's... It, it's insane that this exists, and you guys are amazing. For, you guys are amazing yeah, for doing it. Making requests. <laughs> You guys are insane. You're crazy people. Dude, I forgot about that. I did too until you just brought it up. Was that but a hey. request? Did somebody ask for that? No. No, I forget why we just why we forgot <laughs> to do that. But Bulk liked it. Yeah, the, the Bulk, actor. Bulk loved it. Yeah, Paul yeah. Schreier yeah. is amazing. Uh, he, he, yeah, he's he's a big fan himself. He always he comes out for stuff like that when it's good. And uh, I interviewed him at Mor- Planet Morph, or, pardon me, Power Morphicon back in 2016. Uh, and when I say interviewed, I mean I put a camera on him for 10 minutes, and he just did crazy, yeah. hilarious, silly things. And he's yeah, he's Schreier's wonderful. Love that he guy. He seems like he's the best dude ever. I've been, I've been waiting to go to a convention that we're playing that he's at. Yeah, um, just so I can meet him because all, all of our interactions with him, I'm like, dude, he's he's just bulk. Like he lives bulk. You know yeah, I, mean? I I have a lot of respect for people who um who do stuff like that where they they know people love the character, so he's never gonna act like he's above the character. Right, right. Never. Like his Instagram name being Das Bulk. Hundred. <laughs> no, he fully owns it. In a weird way, he's yeah. been as as much or more the face of Power Rangers as any of those guys mm, over the years. He's, he's total ball of charisma. That's all he is. Uh, well, folks, let me let me ask you guys real quick. Uh, Lame Genie, how, how much longer can you guys stick around? I'm worried about the snow there. Time's at 925. Uh, it, I, I, mean, I hope we looked outside. It turned to rain. So <laughs> it's going to be slippery instead of something we can get stuck in. We'll be Okay, cool. Well, anytime you guys need to get going, feel free to. We usually run the show out for two hours, uh, so if you, if you if you need to go before that or you just get really bored, uh, feel free. I've got some more tracks I can play, and uh, we've got... <laughs> Bye, guys! <laughs> Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. And now, an empty couch. Um, hey, can yeah. I give a quick shout-out to Please do. Uh, our boy Billy Vada? I saw him in the chat when I looked at it been a long time uh, friend of ours he's the best he's the best billy the best of auto <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah cool of him to be be in here i was uh, talking to him and assumed that he was probably um from you guys because i had not seen him before mm-hmm. he's the best he's the best that's all i gotta say really <laughs> Uh, so, live commenters right now, uh, feel free to throw more questions in for Lame Genie about, and, and about anything you want to, guys, within reason. Uh, as, as always on the Captain Logan Show, we'll talk about anything geeky you feel like chatting about. Uh, Connor, did, did we uh, did we miss any questions? Uh, any, anything you saw, even outside of uh, Super Chats? Well, we've got one more Super Chat, might want to chat but about? I got, got lots of uh, questions that are not Super Chats, too. Good. Um, well, let's go ahead and do those, then. Uh, the one super chat or the other ones? Do you wanna? Uh, yeah, start with the super chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, Goofster one two three gives us five dollar super chat. Thanks, buddy. They ask. Uh, speaking of video games, any thoughts on the Last of Us finale? Very true to the game, and super curious how they go about part two. Yeah. So I haven't even watched it yet. Have you? I wish one of you guys. I played. I played the game. I loved the game. Yeah. We we just did a cover of the Last of Us theme song uh, two weeks ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, we just put that out, and uh, that theme is amazing. But I was a huge fan of the game. Uh, it really blew my mind when it came out. Um, just the way the game felt. You know, it was a very different feeling game. But no, I haven't watched any of the show yet. Same. Likewise. 
I haven't finished it. I'm still two, three down. I've just been busy, but I, I love what I've seen of it so far. And I still haven't played the game, so I thought it would be interesting to watch that show and uh, get it that way first and, and then go right. backwards and sort of play the game like an adaptation. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so so I reviewed the first uh, the first episode, that you know, the pilot, and liked it a lot. But Yeah, people like that show as its own thing. Like, yeah, it's nice you. that you don't have to play the game or anything. It's not like if you... <laughs> If you walked into the Super Mario Brothers movie, <laughs> like, I have mean, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yep. actually, speaking of the yeah, Super ahead. Mario Brothers movie, uh, the the aforementioned Billy Vada asks, um, I thought Chromatic Mario was the only way you'd cover Super Mario's <laughs> OST. What made you cave and do the movie OST uh, with the same songs? So... I've always said I never want to cover the original uh, Mario song just because, I don't know, everyone's done it. Right. But I think, A, the movie's coming out. So and the it timing was, is it great. Was, it was Mario Day, um, and we wanted to do something for Mario Day. And I think it was more of the, th you know, I think we're in the camp now where we're like, we don't care. People have done it. Like when yeah. we first started, we were very against doing a lot of songs that people that other bands in our scene did. Like we didn't want to yep. do like a Mega Man Two, Wild, you yeah. know. Like we didn't want to do those classics, and now we just don't care. So <laughs> I think it was time to do Mario One. Uh, Chromatic Mario is still my favorite, though. Yeah, yeah, it was. Hilarious. I don't know if you've ever heard Chromatic Mario, but basically, um, <laughs> how do I even describe it? It's if you take the Mario theme and then every time a note in the song goes up, we just go up a half step. And if it goes down, we go down a half step. Regardless so, of the note. Regardless yeah. of what the note is. So it ends in this disjointed, like, ridiculous. How this? Like... It's, it's the worst version of Mario you've <laughs> ever heard. It's... Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it, shall we? Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Do it up. Do it up. We have a video for it, right? No. Uh, kind of. There is. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> the TV is on fire! Everybody look at Jason right now, he can't handle it. <laughs> he can't even deal with it. He's like, stop! Do feel like uncomfortable by that? There's something wrong with it. Yeah. We... We recorded this in a short time span with the AOL dial-up theme Oh, that's too. right. That was one of my favorite covers we did that never caught on. So if anyone, anyone out there has ever used dial-up internet, we covered the sound of dial-up internet through AOL. Um, and that was one of my favorite things that we've done that I was like, this is going to be a huge hit. And no, I don't think anyone's... It was funny, it was okay? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but what's amazing about this is, like, the production values are still there. Like, it's really technically well done. It was technically difficult as hell because yeah. the, way, the way those scales work, it's not very natural to play like that, so... That's all, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. That was around the time we started also uploading our videos to Pornhub as well as YouTube. <laughs> That's, <laughs> <true>. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's We hilarious. were really meme back then. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. Back then. I don't right, know why I, I even know. said that. <laughs> and that was obviously, too, before we started doing, like, videos for YouTube, right? So <laughs> right there, we just have gameplay and a TV, and we were like, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was the extent of our video production back then. <laughs> Hmm. I, I I actually had a question about kind of your beginnings. Um, your your first video... Lane Genie begins. <laughs> your, <laughs> your first video on YouTube was the Smash Bros. Kirby Dreamland cover. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. what what made you guys want to start with that song? Like it was what... one of the songs that Jeff had already done. I think right, yeah. it was like one of I think like twelve. Yeah, I I did a bunch of songs, and then when we got together, we just decided originally we were going to be a YouTube channel, um, and then we switched to albums, and now we're back to a channel. But we were just gonna run through all the songs that I had recorded myself and remade them, 
and those uh, videos were live too. So those were all co recorded completely live yeah. in in my basement with that four camera setup. So um, that was an interesting time, you know. Like it was like really we didn't know what we wanted to do yet. We just know we wanted to do video game covers. So um, and Jeff had that one already done. So yeah, it was just like all right, let's get some videos out. So we we just worked on that first. Yeah, that that was awesome. Like back then, filming videos had like a specific kind of excitement to them. Right. And, well, because I think because it was live. Well, the other thing, yeah. too, was... Well, and because we had never done it before. That's true. Yeah. For that, we did the first four songs, like, that one day. And then we just kind of staggered out the releases. Yep. So mm. it took us, like, all the way through August. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, we look like children. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? I have that with my old stuff. Because uh, uh, you guys go back almost as far as, as I do on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, when I go back to my... Well, I, I, I go back to 09, uh, so I guess a, a little bit before you guys. And, uh, yeah, when I go back to my earliest stuff, like, yeah, I'm a friggin' child. <laughs> were you consistent since 09? Were you uploading like, all the time in 09 up until now? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I've been full-time YouTube for 14 years. Wow. I say full-time. I mean, Jeez. it was more of a hobby at the beginning, but I still posted right. very regularly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you probably have a lot of knowledge as far as, like how the landscape of YouTube has changed since you started versus now, right? Yeah. I'm and, sure it was a totally different beast back then. Well, when I started, uh, you could only post 10-minute videos. I remember that, yeah. And we are very long form now. I mean, it's really changed what I do and made me kind of play more to my strengths because, you know, I'm a little long-winded and I like to go very in-depth on things. And so we've gotten a lot more podcasty in our later years. But when we started, you know, it was real bite-sized, like, 10-minute videos. And then it's it's funny how everything kind of winds back around on itself, uh, like, you know, dog chasing its tail because now you got now you got yeah. TikTok and YouTube shorts. And so it's a little bit of everything now. Like, there's a lot of people that are only making minute-long videos and very successful at it. And it's like, what even should the length of videos be? Anyway? Does it make sense to podcast on YouTube versus Spotify versus whatever? Yes and no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very complex now. And the algorithm is a completely different beast. We, we didn't even know if that was a thing at the beginning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I... But yeah. Well, I don't think it really was, you know, like in those early ages of YouTube, you just post a video and then people saw it because yep. there wasn't a ton of content to see. Um, so stuff just kind of ended up on your, your homepage. And, and I was worried it was too saturated when I started. Yep. Yeah. Now it's different in which you put up a video and no one sees it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, um, it's funny. All of our all of our covers that we do are that are movie related. As soon as we post it, nobody sees it. It's it's crazy. Um, I don't know why. Like so, The Last of Us that kind of happened, and yeah. uh, we covered the the theme from Rocky Four, the the training montage. It's like one of oh, my favorite covers. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Um, um so and that I just feel like didn't perform well at all. And I'm like, do our, no one likes our movie covers? I guess, or you know, it's just not our fan base. I think it's because. Um... The algorithm, in, in a, I mean, it sounds weird saying this is the algorithm actually working, but I think when you do, when we do movie covers, they think, well, Lame Genie's audience doesn't really do movies. Yeah, so we're not going to show. So yeah. they just don't, it, it just doesn't show up in the, in anybody's feeds, yeah. Right, yeah. It's strange. Uh, well, and I, and I hate this for you guys, but I have the same thing with video game content. Mm-hmm. Like my audience is, you know, mostly here for uh, for for superhero movie stuff and, uh, and and comics to some degree, and sometimes I like talking about this stuff also. And like, you know, the the name Geek Evolution, we've always been a little bit of everything. It's always been kind of you know pop culture on mass, but with a you know kind of a focused emphasis on uh, like like uh, like story analysis for superhero movies. Um, which is real niche, but we do a bunch of other stuff. And anytime I talk about video game stuff, it's there, you know it's it's kind of a small group of people that comes out of the woodwork. But uh, hello, Connor. But it's interesting to me. I like I like doing it. Uh, Connor, what I uh, what else do you see there in the comments? Are you making sure uh, he's yeah. still with us? Yeah, he's he, he. I forgot that he existed, and so I was just like, oh yeah, Connor should like do. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Wait. <laughs> Did somebody say Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> yes. 
I, I, I just realized now how much you look like Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> wow. Ah, you do. Yeah, it just hit me just now. And he's like, laughing. I was like, holy look. crap, it's Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy dude. Fallon laughs, laughs all like the time. I can't stop looking at you and thinking about it in the past, like, five minutes. <laughs> is that a compliment? Is it an insult? I guess it depends on who you ask. It's just it's a thing, fun. you know? I just kind of wow. embrace it. No, I just kind of embrace it. I just shaved too. So has has this... other people told that to you before, Connor? Uh, yeah, since I was 17, I've heard. Are it you serious? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Connor, have well, you gotten it on the channel very much? Uh, no, not on this. Because I've gotten uh, Seth but... Rogen since 2009, just all oh, the time. Not... Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because like um, in 2019, I gained like 40, 50 pounds pretty quickly, and then that went away. And then last year, I lost 50 pounds, and then it just came nice. all back. It was like, hey, you look like Jimmy Fallon. Anyone to tell you that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I hear yep. that. <laughs> what do you like? Crap! I should just gain all that weight again. It's time to go with uh, Lame Genie the Taco Bell. Yeah, well, you should no, just see Jimmy Fallon, right? Just go out in I, public, dress as Jimmy Fallon, you'll be fine. Yeah. Hey, no way, no way. Um, but like, uh, <laughs> 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 practicing that. Um, he doesn't so have to. Funny. He just is Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> I just shaved too. Like I had a beard for the last couple of seasons, so <laughs> I'm like, yep, yeah, there it is. Um, anyway, Fallon, Fallon Shields, the beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have a question from Robot uh, Co-op. And uh, they ask, uh, how do you approach scooping out those pesky mids in your guitar tone when the shredder has sent you back to the Stone Age? Don't answer my dumb question. Just keep slaying, gents. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you never scoop the mids. <laughs> never, ever scoop the mids. Um, shredder! Then, uh, <laughs> um, I feel like I should have read that in a, in a, in a voice. I'm not familiar with turtles. Uh, I should. I should oh, you it. need to watch more turtles. I do. Oh, well, yeah. Fallon does a lot of impressions. That's true. So. <laughs> That's true. If you're gonna be Fallon, you gotta get on the crang of it all. Look, I can I can do um, Quentin Tarantino pretty well. Um, <laughs> all I <right>. can do. <laughs> do the next one like Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> okay. No, how about do the next one like Jimmy Fallon doing Quentin Tarantino? Yeah. Oh my God. Doing crang. <laughs> oh. 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 A Krang? Okay. Um, huh. So Billy uh, Vada asks, so like, will you guys do anything for like April Fool's this year? All right. Royal Panda was hilarious. <laughs> Read that one more time. I was laughing. Was yeah, good. I don't know what he said. That was awesome. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, that was good. Um, so uh, Billy Vada asks, will you guys do anything for April Fool's this year? Uh, Royal Pander was hilarious. Oh, Royal uh, Pander. Um, a April Fool's is coming early this year. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Friday so, we have a stupid one coming, so maybe um, that'll take the place. April Fool's a uh, couple years ago, well, many years many ago. Many years ago, yeah. We, uh, we were releasing an album called Royal Pander. Um, Retro Pander. Retro Pander. Retro Pander. Retro Pander. Um, and at the same time, we were releasing one called Royal Panda. Retro Royal Panda. Royal Panda. Retro Panda was like our real album, and Royal Panda was just we covered the Killer Instinct theme song and remixed it with a bunch of other songs like All Star and uh, Celine Dion. Celine so we Dion. found a bunch oh, of isolated wonderful. vocal tracks and put them all over the Killer Instinct theme, uh, and it was one of my favorite works that we've done. Yeah, because we retuned the music to fit the vocal. We have uh, Disturbed. Vanity. We have a Disturbed cover on oh, there. Drowning yeah. Pool. Let the bodies <laughs> we, have, the yeah, we have Drowning Pool. That's a classic. <laughs> I love that album, man. Mm. I feel like that was one that no one definitely heard, but the people that did hear it love it. You know what's funny? That's one where we, we definitely didn't buy licenses for any of those. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I think we, I we think, don't sell that, though. We don't sell it. I think we, we actually did put All Star on YouTube. Yep. But I think it got sh struck like by the way. Oh, I would. Uh, I don't know if it's playing. Okay. Oh, is this gonna be a copyright mistake? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's hilarious, and we will listen to that later. But I, I'm with you. We're gonna we're gonna get flagged if we play too much of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know that Smash Mouth guys has seen better days, and he's gonna take all the YouTube money he can get. <laughs> it's true. <laughs>
Um, I, I gotta say, I don't know how you, I, I mean, you guys have built a respectable audience, a respectful audience, so don't get me wrong, but uh, I, I, a respectable, I should say, audience, but uh, I, I don't understand why you guys haven't caught on harder than you have. When, when I look at some of the uh, million viewed, and I, I don't mean to go to a negative place or anything, but when I look at some of the, like, uh, you know, million subscriber uh, YouTube channels that do what you guys do, you guys are every bit as good as, as any of those. I, I don't I don't get it. Like I love Smooth McGroove. I don't get why he has a million plus subscriber base and you guys don't have at least a hundred to two hundred thousand by now. Well thank you. Um I I have a theory on that why our reach <laughs> isn't that great, but um well no, it's it's good now. But yeah. for a while, you know earlier I said we started as a YouTube channel and we released four videos. And then over the next, like, six years, we released, like, ten videos. If, uh, yeah. Yeah. So once we got into 2020, when we started doing a video every week, the overall average of, like, views, it would be way different if we had released a video every week the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, you think the channel just got, like, uh, like shoveled into obscurity because we didn't post for so long? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. It's so weird how, and obviously you you guys and I do totally different things, and I don't mean to parallel us too much, but like it's really weird how similar your history is to mine, because a few years ago I quit making as often the the main thing that uh, got the most views and yeah. steered towards some other things. So I didn't you know drop off like you guys did and only posted every so often, but I was making different kinds of content. Mm. And yeah, so I've kind I, of experienced that just that like you guys YouTube have. To the same thing what no matter what kind of content you're making like even at magfest we talked to a bunch of our friends that do youtube and you know you can talk about youtube with other youtubers for hours because everybody is going through the same shit constantly <laughs> so it's, yeah it's absolutely super relative to everybody it is such a puzzle it is that, like, yeah. even some of my favorite youtubers would talk about the algorithm like yeah. way back when i'm just like nah I'm making it up yeah but now i'm just like all right well, and like, I, I think if you guys are like we, me, like we're creative. Uh, Sorry, if you guys are like me, we're creative types. So right. like, I don't want to think about that side of it. I just want to make what I want to make. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think, you know, after doing it and investing a lot of time into looking at our analytics and stuff like that and kind of getting a grasp on it, I think that's a lot of the reason why we tend to do a lot of stupid stuff too is you never know, like stupid stuff meaning like, weird covers like chromatic mario or or like the one we have coming on friday it's like you never know what's going to be so dumb that people are going to want to watch it do you know what i'm saying I, I think that that side of of youtube about like just the way meme culture is now it's like yeah. usually those stupid things tend to do pretty well so we don't mind taking the the opportunity to do stuff like that and it's kind of just you know throwing stuff at the wall and whatever sticks you kind of just run with that well and the meme stuff is just really fun it's so, like it's fun, so yeah. you know it it's whatever yep. it's not like um if you were just clout chasing and covering things you don't like yep. that just kind of sucks because yep. it yep. might not pick up and you're not doing anything fun mm -hmm. like little v is another youtuber and he covered a, a barbie girl song um, and he was dressed as Barbie the whole time, and it was amazing. It was and it's amazing. like, and that song hasn't been relevant in you know like decades, but um, that did super well for him, and it's a genius move on his part. But you, like, you you never can tell, and and everyone's just you know releasing the stuff you want, but at the same time also knowing that you have to you have to bend to what YouTube wants you to do in order to be seen by anybody. Yeah, I don't know if you know Little V, but he's a national treasure. Protect <laughs> <laughs> it at all costs. <laughs> Guys, what is your most viewed video next to Mortal Kombat if that is the if that is the biggest one? Roar of DDD from Kirby and the Forgotten Land. It's it's Kirby and the Forgotten Land is their most viewed. Most of viewed, all okay. Time. I didn't I look at that. I should have. Right? Yeah. I think it's about oh, wow. at about four hundred thousand now. Oh, okay. That's that's yeah. awesome. Wow. Have you guys uh, ever done any Donkey Kong Country? Yep. Mm. We uh, we play Aquatic Ambience live from. Oh, that's time. right. You know, I've heard your Aquatic Ambience. What am I talking yeah. about? Yeah, it's great. Sticker Bush Symphony. Oh yeah, Sticker Bush Symphony. Sticker Bush Symphony from DK2 or Smash Brothers. We've done yeah. that. We did the Forest and um, Lude from Donkey Kong Country mm -hmm. 2. Jeff has a whole entire Donkey Kong Country 2 album recorded. <laughs> that oh wow! We haven't touched yet. We that's haven't great. touched it yet. 
All right, there's the announcement. Right. Three. There, there's our big announcement. Put okay. it on vital. No, that was actually a secret I know. until Kyle just said that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I'm well, I'm honored. Thanks, thanks, Kyle. You're welcome. <laughs> and the, I'm and, actually super stoked on that because yeah, I love that sound. It's came out my so good, and it time. just it's just one I of those things wait. where we just need to find time to to finish it. <laughs> it's all it's pretty much done. So. Mm -hmm. It's not anywhere near done. I got so much basic. Oh, I know, but I'm saying as far as like from a uh, like Jeff's standpoint, Jeff is oh, yeah, quite Jeff's the fans of it. Yeah. Yeah, it mm -hmm. took a long time. It's saved on four hard drives in case <laughs> three of them break. It's huge. <laughs> I, uh, you, you guys, when you put out when you put out the vinyl for that, it's got to be like a barrel, like on oh, the dude. on the record. That would be awesome. Okay. I, I wish oh. it was long enough to fit on like ten vinyls, so we could put ten vinyls in the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> we probably should have dropped the links in the chat for uh, our vinyls coming. I out did. I did three. that. The the yeah the the links uh, to order those are in the description in the Thanks. in, in the Thank live you. video. No problem, guys. No, I'm on it, man. Yeah, because we're we're really excited because these two vinyls coming out at like the same time. <laughs> yeah. We've never released a vinyl before, and we've wanted to since we were a band. Yeah, and so. they and they look wonderful. Yep. Yeah. The uh, so yeah the Ghost Bat, who's a friend of ours, did our uh, TMNT one, and I'm not sure who who did the Zombies one. I'm not either. But he did uh, a well, bang up. It looks great. Yeah, <laughs> How do you not awesome. know who did it? Like, did you not commission well, them to do it? Yeah, so um, the company we're going through from that Respawn Records, he had an artist in mind to do that cover. Oh, I um, see. So he, he had that cover done for us, and when we first saw it, we were, like, blown away. It just looks so awesome. It does. It looks tasty. Yeah. I'd, I'd eat it. <laughs> well, and would it even be yeah. a given that it would be a picture record like that? Mm. Wait, what do you mean? Well, I just mean that there would be art on the record itself. Like, did you know for sure when you got it commissioned that it was even going to be like that, that there was going to be art on the record itself. We so, didn't know any of it, really. So, <laughs> so Respawn has wanted to do this record for a while now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said earlier, we ran into the issues licensing. So a lot of the artwork was done, and he, he ran some of the uh, record prints by me, saying, like, oh, we have Blood Splatter Red or um, see the one with, like Cheerleader Green. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, but so I knew those ones would look like that, and the Ninja Turtles one, we have it in, um, what do you call it? Mutagen green. Mutagen green. <laughs> so it looks like the secret of the ooze. Mm -hmm. The secret is that it's ooze. <laughs> that there is, the there is there is no secret <laughs> to the ooze. It's it's just that there is ooze. That is the secret. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, I want to play another track. We were talking about this one earlier, and uh, it's we, you guys said you're, it's, it's one you're most proud of. It's one of my favorites uh, so far of what I've heard. I haven't heard as much as Connor, even though I'm a big fan of you guys. He's got the Vigo shirt. Of immediately imagine this working great as a metal song. I think this is my favorite drum track so far. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of space in that song to kind of have fun with, you know? I think that's a big part about that. those huge songs like that. Those are our favorites, too. 
for sure. I had not heard that one until this morning, and it, it got me, man. I was like, how does that even work? Because I, because I was like, no offense or nothing. I kind of expected it to be half cheesy. I don't know how else you do that, and and it does not come across that way. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, like you said, it's a big, airy, spacey right. song. So it's, like, you, it's like a ballad. Yeah, so you can do a lot with it. And it's like how I was saying certain songs you need to follow everything that the song does and while this one does that there's room to do other stuff as well mm -hmm. um and those are my favorites like chill penguin right chill penguin from yeah. mega man x is a good example well uh, we got about 10 minutes left in the show jason did you have another question yeah I had a couple okay go ahead uh take so over the show man oh man um so you could have done this whole yeah. interview by yourself yeah and it probably would have been more interesting <laughs> Probably not. Go ahead. Uh, have any of you guys actually owned a Game Genie? And if so, <laughs> yeah, what is what your favorite there. Game Genie code? What a good question. Oh, uh, what, what was the follow-up? And and if so, what is your favorite Game Genie code? Um, the first time I used a Game Genie was on Zelda. <sighs> trying to remember. The thing with the Game Genie is, it's not just like, oh, you get extra lives. It does things that wreck the game. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Like, it's like you get extra lives and you can't see Link. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was unfortunate. But I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I have one uh, right on my shelf over there. Um, I, I don't even the... think I've ever used it, to be honest with you. I know that there was one for Zombies Ate My Neighbors where it was like, start with this weapon. But there was one of them for a weapon that didn't exist in the game. <laughs> I think it was like a reskinned version of the freeze pops, and they just called it something else. Was Game There's, Genie like that. actually commissioned? It seems to me like you're just, you know, you're literally just hacking the game apart, and it seems like Nintendo would not want Dude, you to do that. So yeah. Jason, I'm sure, can give us a quick rundown of the history of this. Do you, do you know about this? Yeah, it's um, Galoob's so, suit up the ass. Yeah, I know that it's Galoob, but I don't actually know... Because I know that you've seen, you've actually like watched videos about it. Yeah, I have. But you haven't. Okay. If memory serves, it was it was kind of a situation where it it wasn't initially commissioned by Nintendo, and Nintendo tried to stop it, like they did so many other things, including right. yeah. <laughs> including just like being able to rent video games. They they tried to quelch that too, and went to war with uh, with with uh, video game rental, but. They they started uh, they they I think they got in bed with Sega first, and then eventually Nintendo followed suit because that was successful, and they finally decided okay fine we'll let you we'll we'll let you guys do this and put our seal on it. But it took Sega doing it first, I think. It's been a while, but I'm pretty was sure that's that how. Was that with it. the Genesis or Mega Drive? No, it would have been Probably. Genesis first. Oh. <laughs> the same system. Well, he means Genesis or Master System. Master System, yeah. Master System, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Jason's calling you an idiot, right? <laughs> no. No. Uh, but Mega was Drive it the is... Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom? <laughs> was, um... Didn't the 16-bit ones... Didn't they have Game Shark? Game Shark, yeah. No, no that was a Game Genie no that, no, that was, yeah. uh, like, 64-bit consoles. 16-bit oh, yeah. consoles still had Game Genie. Oh, okay. And let me just throw this out yeah, there that Jack. I appreciate that you guys didn't... <laughs> need an explanation on what our name meant because yeah. we've talked to so many people that are like that name is stupid what does that even mean and we're like oh, okay you're you're an idiot yeah <laughs> you know? well, what i love about it is at least for for you know my generation and people in the know it it, it immediately tells you what you guys make uh, that right. like like your you know, like your focus is retro, but also that you're not taking yourselves like super seriously. What I did want to ask you guys though, what the genesis of it was, uh, no pun intended. Like how how did you guys land on it? Were there any other ideas you floated out before you ended up land Dude, doing that? And how much of it is intentional self-deprecation? So basically, I think we filmed those four songs. I think it was like July of 2013, and we we're gonna put our first one out the next week and we were just sitting there like we don't have a name and kyle said lame genie just because you just want to change one letter and make it a pun and that was it and Dude. that was it <laughs> and, and, we just, and we just said yes which is super funny because every band i've been in coming up with a name has been an absolute nightmare yeah. but this one kyle's like i don't know lame genie we're like yep 
<laughs> the thing is, the thing is, I didn't, I didn't get the joke until I watched one of your old videos where you actually had the, like, the logo that actually looked like the Game yeah. Genie, and okay. and you guys. Did you and, feel like an idiot? Yeah, because <laughs> you didn't really like. I don't see that as much in your newer videos and stuff. Yeah, I think as as we matured, we kind of strayed away from that logo because um, at first, you know, like those first couple of videos, we needed the logo to kind of establish the brand. And now I think that Lame Genie itself has more of an established brand. We were kind of able to come away from that logo and just be Lame Genie itself without yeah. having the Game Genie to back us, you know? Plus, we do do a lot less retro things than we used to That's as well. That's true, yeah. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, you kind of summed it up perfectly where... I think unintentionally having the word lame in the name really sums us up as a whole, you know, because oh, yeah. we don't take ourselves seriously at all. Whether like there's a lot of seriousness that goes into the product, but like, you know, when it comes down to it, we're just a bunch of idiots. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if you're going to have mostly comedy shows for your live shows, having a name like that really helps to, to, you know, put up a sign and say, this is what we are. For sure. For sure. That's true. It's more fitting yeah. than I even thought of myself. Yeah, so. people are a lot less shocked when we come out with our clown suits. Do you mean literally you've got clown no. suits and pogo sticks? Cause... No, we did just... But you have to do a show actually, like that now. We just added wacky inflatable two men to our set. So when we play now, we have two wacky inflatable two men on stage with us that pop up when songs start and they die out when songs end and stuff like that. So you should just do that that's awesome. You should just do a whole show as the Joker mimes from Batman eighty nine. <laughs> that's what you okay. should do. You should Batman. you should have a bit where one of you comes out, the pen is mightier than the sword and then just I pretend to kill the other guy and there's that, blood man. spurting out of his neck and yeah it'd be wonderful. It's one of my favorite movies. That dude yes. is the only Batman man. The only Batman. Yeah. Um, Would you like to come back for a commentary for Batman 89? Yes, That's because another... I've been watching that movie since I was like 10, yeah, and that movie... <laughs> he laughs like that. He laughs, dude. He's laughing. He's going to bang the dude. table. Bang the table, pal. Okay. <laughs> so I have to explain to you guys why Connor is losing his mind over there. Uh, we, we have this running gag on the channel. I'm, I'm a huge 89 fan. Uh, that, that movie is the reason I get into comics and, and Batman and superheroes in the first place. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for that. And I have done now 11 or 12 separate commentaries on Batman 89 on the channel over 14 years. And we keep looking for new angles and excuses to do yet another commentary on 89. And that's why I asked you that. I'll do, I'll do any day of the week you want. I'll do a bat. I'll sit in with Batman eighty nine and we can do it because, uh, oh, I'll, my brother who also on YouTube his channel is Born to Be Rad. He does retro horror movies and and reviews like that too. Mm -hmm. Um, and to us that's like that is the Batman movie that we remember the most. Even even Returns I think was really good. Um, but eighty nine is like, that's like the end all for me. It's so good. It's perfect. Well, obviously, you guys are welcome back for any of the insane nonsense that we do here. But especially, you got you got to do an '89 commentary with me. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I did one that was the the we spent the entire two hours talking about nothing but Bob the Goon. We did a Batman '89 Bob the Goon commentary. I like uh, Lieutenant uh, Eckhart. It's one of my favorites. You know, Lieutenant like Bobby, Eckhart. But he's like Bobby. He's like you're my number one. Is it Bobby? I don't remember. No, who's who's it's playing? Jack. Who's well, 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 yeah, Bob, Bob the Goon, yeah, yeah, because yeah. he, oh, yeah. you are my number one, a guy. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so good. Mm. I brought you a sandwich. Why don't you broadcast it anyway? Uh, Jason, <laughs> um, you know how a normal person gets up in the morning and goes downstairs. And anyway, um, we've got uh, just a couple minutes left in the, in the show. Was there, did you have any yeah, other questions uh, you really wanted to throw yes, out? Yes, this is actually a really sorry, good sorry, last quick, question. Sorry, sorry, quick. Before we move off of Batman 89, I just have to say, yeah. hello, <laughs> legs. All right. I'm hello, legs! <laughs> I'm reading yours. Sorry, go ahead. Um, if you made a whole album based on one song that you made in the past, what would it be? Um, that's well, a good, really good question. So, like, of a, of a cover that we've already done, what would we make a whole album, like, a, as far as, like, a whole soundtrack cover? Oh. Yeah. X? Either Mega Man X, but I would... 
I'm inclined to say Chrono Trigger, but that yeah. soundtrack's like three hours long. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man X, I think, is a natural right. answer for this. And that, that soundtrack is so good anyway. Yeah. You know, it's it's a no-brainer. It or, or two, Mega Man 2. Mm. Mega Man 2, I would do. Any of the Mega Mans, really. Um, what else? I'm, um, what did we do recently that we're going <sighs> to... I don't remember. Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. <laughs> no, but definitely X. I think X, like, like Jeff said, it is a natural album to do because the songs are so iconic for this generation of people that love that game Mm -hmm. you know i i just thought of this connor you know what's amazing i'm always getting crap from our audience for announcing things on this show out of nowhere people always say stop announcing things and you guys you guys announced an album accidentally on the see it's really easy to do that i do it too I'm just, I'm, it's it my could, fault. I'm just so excited it about could, things. Yeah. It, have those surprises. <laughs> it could be years, but I'm really looking forward to that one. And when it comes out, we'll announce it on this show again five years from now. Yeah, hey, I don't care how long it takes because that's. I'm going to announce it officially during our Batman 89 commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, no we'll play the whole thing for the first time on the Batman 89 commentary. Nobody will see it coming. Yep. Let, let's not announce it and then just have Captain Logan announce yeah. it himself. Okay. Wasn't there a time when you, like, it was like an April Fool's joke and you pretended to that you were going to do a Spider-Man commentary? Yes, we did that last year. We we, we claimed that we were going to do the No Man, the, the No Way Home commentary. But when you came into it, you had to watch us do Batman 89 again. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, tenth nice. time. That's great. I got a stupid plot like that for for this April Fool's Day too. But I'm not going to tell anybody what it is yet. I I don't you know. You know what we about should do that. for April Fools? You guys should review Batman '89, yes. and we release that as a music video. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this two hours long? Yeah. Wait a minute. Usually our videos, the countdown to the premiere is twice as long as the video. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, we've got to let these guys go. We've been at it for two hours now. Connor, uh, do you see, like, one more question that just absolutely has to be answered before we play out with one more video? Um, yeah, uh, this is another question from Billy Vada. Uh, Thanks, Leo Billy, Jeannie, for being here tonight, man. Uh, you have a huge catalog on YouTube that isn't on a Bandcamp album. Will you get to an album release schedule to keep up? I'd like to. But we're so busy with videos. Yeah. Well, I think he's talking more about songs that we've already released. I know, but like, <laughs> usually our our time is put into recording and doing videos and stuff that we just don't really even think about it. What it's been so, recently is, hey, when's the next Bandcamp Friday? Uh, can we just put an album out quick? We have so many songs just sitting here, and. I think that's it. We'll come up with an album name in like a day and an album art in a day and just, you know, that's yeah. our album. Most so. of that's it. We don't have enough album names to keep up with the amount of songs. <laughs> that we, we have so many songs that are only released on YouTube and Spotify and not on an album that I think it would be super funny to release an album like every two days for like a yeah. month. <laughs> hey guys, let's announce them all on uh, on Captain Logan show. Every album. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I want to turn into you guys' biggest advocate, man. All right. You I just... I I I love your stuff, but I also have had so much fun just hanging out with you guys for the last couple hours. Yeah. Man, eighty nine commentary, man. Dude. Make it happen. I'll be there. This is this has been yeah. absolutely the best. You guys are so much so much fun. Thank you a ton for Thank being you. here. You guys and, too, for sure. I think. Um, Thank you for having us, but I also think it would be super funny if, instead of him just announcing it, it's we go into one of his streams and we super chat. Hey, can you announce our album? <laughs> 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 oh, we got this five dollars super chat from Lame Genie, and they just want to tell everybody this really important thing for their YouTube channel. Yeah. Then we just super chat yeah. again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that one. It's a one dollar super chat. Yeah, the one dollar super chat. You yeah, can't even ask a question with a one dollar super chat. We, we, yeah, the, the two dollar. We can't even fit all the text in. To, should we just call the next album? Up. We should make an album for Friday called Batman Sixty Nine. 89, dude. Batman 69. <laughs> if it's Batman 69, it's about the failed third season of the Adam West show. That's amazing. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. 
Like if we can come, like we just have to figure out the stupid album names because that's how it, everything's been. We can put the animated series intro on it and be called Batman Sixty Nine. <laughs> yeah, Sixty Nine. So <laughs> or no, no, we call it Batman Sixty Nine, but the opening track's Batman, and the rest is all of the Pokemon songs. <laughs> <laughs> You know that Pokemon song off Batman 69? <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> well, Batman 69 just makes it sound dirty. It's awful. I know. <laughs> so this is how most of our creative sessions go. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's just yeah. this. Yeah, you guys just got a bird's eye view onto how all of our stuff gets it's done. It's so entertaining. <laughs> you should just post them. Like, Actually, you're, you're seeing how we do it, too, because most of our creative sessions happen on live stream in front of everyone. Right. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. then you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You're, you guys are wicked accountable. Like, Your whole chat's just like, yeah, you said you were going to do this. Yeah, I feel like an accomplice, actually. Right. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Justin Wang, but um, he's a YouTuber. I was a big fan of him, uh, or I am. And he does all the intros for um, our Turtles in Time album. Oh, cool. And we got him to do it because on a stream, I super chatted and asked him to do it. <laughs> and he said yes. And he said yes. What a guy. <laughs> That's really cool, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. He's the best. Yeah, he's awesome. It was awesome. I was super stoked. <laughs> well, we're going to let you guys go. Once again, thanks a ton. This is the, the most fun I've had on a stream in a while. You guys are awesome. Uh, we're going to play out now with a track that Jason picked. Uh, and you guys did a whole yeah. album for Dr. Mario. And so we're yes. going gonna to play out with some Dr. Mario. And in the meantime, everybody, thanks as always for listening in to and watching the Captain Logan Show. I'll be back tomorrow night with another request. Thursday, another Captain Logan Show. And Friday night... Get ready. It's the big second 24-hour stream for Smallville. We're doing uh, Count and Crypt Freaks The Revenge, watching the entire second season overnight from 10 o'clock into however long it takes to the next day and counting crazy random stuff that happens in Smallville. Look forward to it. The first uh, the first one went just swimmingly. It went wonderful. And uh, I've been trying to get through that show for too long on this channel, so it is just time to finally get the thing knocked out. And that's why we're doing it in that insane format. So I hope some of you guys will be there for that. And in the meantime, I was Captain Logan. We had my son, Jason. Yeah. And thanks. filling in for DJ. Thanks again for doing it, Connor. Connor Nielsen. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. You guys are awesome. I'm just sitting over here silently <laughs> laughing the entire time. Yeah. You guys are great. Oh, that's yeah. the best. Thank you. Uh, check out Lame Genie on YouTube. Uh, any any other socials or anything you guys want to plug real quick? Uh, Spotify, YouTube. uh We've been pretty active on TikTok recently and Twitter, I think, is the, ba- is the main ones, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Type, oh. in, type in Lame Genie. No one wants the name but us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lame Genie is very searchable. So if you type it in, you'll get a lot. So Also, get our Zombies and My Neighbors vinyl and our Turtles in Time vinyl. Yeah, so. I certainly will be doing it, at least the Zombies vinyl. And I'll probably get it for Freddy for his birthday or something. Yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you yeah. later. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. Take care. Great meeting you. Bye.